Hi, it's Greg Harrell here, and I want to talk about dot .files. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about my dot .files repo on GitHub. Uh, now, the reason I bring this up is because I've linked to that repo a lot uh, in these screencasts, uh, because I want to provide people with examples of how to set things up. Um, but that does not mean that I want you to install my dot .files. Um, and in fact, it doesn't make sense for anybody to install my dot .files. This is not intended to be a generic project. It's not like, oh my zeesh, or what's another one of those batteries included things, Space Max, whatever. Basically, repos with config in them. This is, this is not that kind of repo with config. It's a repo with my config provided for educational purposes. And the intent is that you steal from it shamelessly. So if you look at the license, it is in the public domain. So you can come in here, look around and copy and paste anything you want. Um, you can also run the install script and you can learn about how it works from the readme, but you're probably going to get a result that isn't necessarily what you would want. Uh, because uh, in here, there is uh, everything divided into aspects. Dot files is just one of the aspects. Um, so if you look in here, you can see a bunch of dot files. Um, there's also this Vim stuff down here, which has a bunch of stuff that is probably of interest to people who are watching this channel. But even if you're interested in this stuff, you probably don't want everything that's in here. Um, one kind of funny example from back when I started all this, uh, I got a bug report from somebody saying they'd installed my dot files and now all of their git commits were being authored by me with my username and my email in the, the commit messages. And when I realized that people were literally just dumping my dot files onto their computers, I turned this into a template and now it only sets the email and the username if variables are set. Um, and those variables only get set if your username on the machine matches my username. So there's still a chance that somebody out there might have my name and wind up getting my email address in their commits, uh, but the odds are slightly less there. But the point is, I had no idea people were just installing these things wholesale instead of copying from them. Um, and so I have put some guards in here. So if I, uh, if I search for identity, Vincent, you see there's a few places in here where I have checks. So basically, uh, if the person is me running the scripts, then do something. Um, and so for example, I have guards uh, that stop, you know, Tampa Monkey from getting set up. Like you probably don't want my Tampa Monkey scripts. You certainly don't want my cron jobs getting set up. You don't want my SSH files getting set up. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff in here which I haven't gated it like that, but you still probably don't want my stuff. So for example, if you look at my ZSharC, like what are the odds that you're going to want my 472 lines of ZSharC and all of the other stuff that I have in here in terms of color setup and exports and directory hashes and my path, right? you probably don't want all that. Um, so the point is this stuff is all in the public domain um, it's made to be stolen, it's made to be used as inspiration, but it's probably not a good idea to just copy it wholesale. Because that would be kind of like buying a house and then buying a copy of everything that I own and putting it in the house exactly where I keep it in my house, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, really all I wanted to say. Please look at my dot .files, but probably don't want to copy them. So I guess I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.